Yo, what's up guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be going over how to make an Amduo cheat for any game, or like almost any game. We're just going to get straight into it. First things first, we need a hook. I'm going to be using Kiro hook, but we need to figure out which one we're using. So we're going to be using Idle Slayer as an example, and to figure out what API, rendering API, video game uses, you can go to this site and look up the game name. So for row 96, um, for row, we're not going to be using row 96, but I use row 96 as an example here. Um, if you just scroll down, you see the API, and it'll say DirectX 11, which is, and then we use DirectX 11. So, um, we're going to be doing Idle Slayer. It's not on here, but um, I'm just going to tell you it's DirectX 11. So, we're going to install a DirectX 11 Kiro hook. So we can just go here, download it. I have a folder here for our project. So, I'm just going to put it in and extract here, and then delete it. And we're just going to open the solution file to this. So now when we got this loaded up, unless we want to upgrade, just, yes. Okay, and we're going to keep everything the same, but we're going to go on release mode. And we're going to go to main.cpp. And we're just going to change the window name. So we're going to start the, the window name. I like to make it. It's just the name of the game. Dash. And then your Discord name and tag. So that's what I like to name my sheets, but it really just all depends. So, um, yeah, there we go. Um, and now what we're going to do is just build this and test, um, if it works. So we, another thing we also need is the direct like, SDK. So X S D K. So, uh, if you just look it up on Google, you click on this and then you can download this one. You need to download this one for this and make sure it's included in your project. So if it says like, um, if it says that like these two are incorrect, then you got to make sure to. You can also go into Visual Studio Installer and download the game development for uh, game development for C++ pack. It'll download all the DirectX libraries you need. Okay, so we're going to use Process Hacker to inject. Um, so let's just look up our game. And it comes right up. You can go ahead and inject it. And there we go. It injects. Then we move around stuff. Um, so yeah, um, in order to close it, we just got to close our game. Let's go ahead and make a couple uh, changes so it looks a bit better. So the first thing we're gonna do is theme it, and we're gonna be using a program called I'm Themes for that. It just basically allows you to select a, th a theme and then hit uh, hit get it, um, and you can get it. So um, this is not working. This this program doesn't really work for me right now. I don't know why. It will open. So I actually just got. I just went into the download source code and got it. So I'm gonna be using this one, the Round and Visual Studio one. Obviously, it'll be more organized for you, but yeah. Um. This is just the um, MGUI thing. So yeah, you can just um, look up Round and Visual Studio and, then the, and the, the dude's name if you want it. And then it should come up. All right, so I just imported a theme um, because that I'm themes thing wasn't like formatted properly. So you can use that app if it works for you. It doesn't really work for me. Yeah, it has worked before, but um, you're gonna put your style just under here. Um, under this init initialized line. Here's where you put your style. This is the style I'm using. It's called, uh, it's just right here. I was just browsing through a couple styles. You could make your own, but I'm using this one right here. It's called uh, Cinder IMGUI. Then this repository right here with a bunch of IMGUI styles. And uh, it's formatted weirdly. So you have to like copy it and then you have to change it and add this. Um, but yeah. There's the theme. So um, now that we have our theme here. Let's go ahead and make a couple adjustments to the window size. So um, in order to change the window size under this uh, begin thing, actually, yeah, no, we'll just do this because we'll do uh, above this begin. We're gonna do I'm I'm GUI into the namespace. We're gonna do set next window size, and we're gonna set it to I'm vec two, and we're gonna set it to nine hundred by four fifty. Okay, and yeah, and okay, that's going to be our window size. Okay. Um, now we have our window size. Um, in our MGUI begin, we're going to add a, a flag. One, two. All right, so you set the next window size now. Um, so let's uh, finish adding a, f let's go ahead and just do 
null for this one. We don't need it. We're gonna set the flag of no resize. So it's uh, I'm GUI window flags, I believe. Yep, underscore and then add no resize. And this will make it so your, your window will not be able to like, you can't resize it. Let's go ahead and test this out. Open up Idle Slayer. And we can test out our theme. So, yep, looks pretty good. There it is. Um, but uh, this font is looking kind of bad. So, we're going to go ahead and fix it. So, um, to do a custom font, um, you need to go ahead and make a new header file and call it, uh, call it like font. Okay, and um, now we need to go ahead and convert our font into hex. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So first we're gonna get your font. I'm gonna be using this uh, Ruta Bold right here. Um, Cause this is a pretty good font. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up HXD. You can, you can download this. And um, we're just gonna go ahead and drag in Ruta Bold into it. And we're gonna go ahead and hit Control A and then edit, copy as C. Then we're going to go ahead and control A and control V. And it will paste all this into here. And I'll show you where it's from. Okay. And now what we can do is we can go into our main.cpp. And do hashtag include font. Font.h. Here we go. Okay, so now we're going to show you, I'm going to show you how to actually make the font work. So, um, first we have to go ahead and go down to where our theme starts. And then we're going to do, um, I'm font config, and then font, and then we're going to do font dot font data owned by Atlas equals false. And then finally, we're going to do IO dot fonts. And then we're going to do uh, add font memory, uh, add font from memory, DTF. All right, and we're going to do a, a void pointer here for that. And then raw data, because we have to convert the raw data to a void pointer. And that's what, it's called raw data, because that's what's in our uh, font.ish. And then we need the size, so we can just do size of raw data. And then for the, for the size, uh, for the, for the size of the font, I always like to do 18.5. And then we have to obviously make a reference to the pointer. Okay. So that's all you need to do for a font. Let's go ahead and see if the font worked. We can go ahead and close out this and close out HXD and open up Idle Slayer. And, oh, let's go ahead and in inject it. And there we go. Looks pretty nice. There's our font. Um, so um, now let's go. Let's just go ahead and get rid of this thing where you can minimize it because we're just gonna add a button to minimize it. So um, I believe that it's another flag that we can do. I think it's no collapse. I believe. So we're gonna do um, actually it's no resize. So we can do I'm GUI window window flags. Underscore no. Uh, hello. No collapse. Oh, and we can't use a comma. We have to use um, this. Um, let's go ahead and test this out. Let's just build it. And yep, there we go. So now it's um, that. So, okay, so um, now we can go ahead and uh, make our tabs. So um, to make our tabs, we're going to do a uh, bracket and then I'm GUI, same line. Okay, 
make that go down a bit. Oh, don't send us all the way down there. Okay. And then on the same line, we're going to add an if statement. And um, if I'm GUI button, so we can make an I'm GUI button here. And then we're going to do, uh, call it main. Uh, main. And then we're going to have it have an I'm vec2 value of 415 by 30 and then we're gonna add brackets under here and now we need to make uh some globals so we can go ahead and add a new thing and call it a uh, new header file and call it globals okay and we're gonna make it a namespace so call it namespace globals okay and here we're going to have tab uh, in tab Go up here and in, in the includes and include globals.h. And then we can go down here. And we gotta get rid of that. Okay, and then we can do globals tab <coughs> tab equals zero. That's gonna be this where I mean tab's gonna be on. And then we're gonna make this next button on the same line. So they're not below each other and we're gonna do if I'm um, GUI button uh, call it misc and then we're gonna go ahead and do an I'm vec2 value of, of the same one so it's even and we're gonna set our globals tab equal to one Okay, and then we can go ahead and put a separator. So it's even. Okay, if we're going to do if tab is equal to zero. And uh, we need to add our namespace. Then what we're going to do is do if I'm GUI checkbox and then, um, actually, I'm not going to do checkbox. If I input float, um, and call it coins, and then we need to appoint it to something. We need to add another one there. Um, so. In our globals, we're gonna have float coin value. Float coins. We're gonna have a point to a uh, reference to globals coins. Um, and I just realized we didn't make it as we have to make it a static float, else it won't work. That's the way I'm GUI works. Okay, and then we're gonna go like this. And um, we're just gonna if oh we need to close that too. There we go. And then we're just going to uh, leave that there. Um, let's just add another if statement for tab two, so we can know if um we can tell if it, tabs are working. So if globals tab is equal to one I'm GUI text high or something like that so you can tell okay let's go ahead and build it and open up idle slayer okay process hacker closed for some reason I'm not purchasing a WinRAR license And now we injected it, and you'll see that we have our. It seems that our separator doesn't really work. I mean, our tabs work, but our separator doesn't work. So, um, I'm just gonna use a different theme because this theme's kind of ass. I am gonna hold you. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna use uh, the theme that I have. Uh, right here. This theme's just a lot better. Let's see if this works. 
Uh, yeah, you guys can use any theme you want, but I'm just going to use this theme. Yeah, this theme looks a lot better. So yeah, this one actually has got like uh, a thing. So you can see we can put in a, a float in here and it doesn't do anything, but it'll actually, you know, do its thing. And then our other tab works. Oh, you can't really see our mouse because our game's just kind of like that. It's kind of got this little custom mouse. But yeah, it works. So now let's go ahead and um actually make a working cheat with this. So um eh, actually before we do that, let's go ahead and make it so we can actually toggle the menu um on and off. So to make that to, to make that happen, it's actually a really easy. Um so I guess we'll just use uh, we can, uh, I'm trying to think of a way we can, I'm, I'm trying to think of a way we can do this. Okay, whatever, yeah, we'll do this. Okay, so we're going to do, um, uh, under this thing right here where we, um, okay, we're going to add, a. We're gonna add another global and call it uh, make it a bool show equals true because this is what we want it to be whenever we do it. Okay, so we're gonna find where it makes a new frame, which is right here. We're gonna add if statement and do if show or if globals show. And if you want, if you want, you can set to false, which means that um. Which means that whenever we load it, you have to click the key before you op the menu opens. So we're going to put everything in here, but um, this thing. So we can actually get our um, loop running still. So I hit control X, control V. Okay. And now we can go ahead and add our um, key state check. Um, so under this, we'll do... oh. I don't, I hate that that happens, bro. It sends me all the way down here. Um, fuck, where were we? Okay. We're gonna do if get, get a sync key state. VK underscore insert. Which is gonna be our thing. And then at one, so if you hit it once. Then we're gonna do globals show equals the opposite of globals show. Um, pretty simple line. Um, and then next we're gonna make a, a button to shut 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 it down. So we're gonna do uh, here if I'm GUI text. Uh, I mean check uh button. And then next, we're going to call the button um, self-destruct. Um, and we're going to also make a tooltip for this. And we're not going to change the size or anything. And we're going to do hero shut down, which is a inbuilt thing to shut down the hook. And then below it, we can do if I'm GUI, I, uh... Item is hovered, and it's just the item that you just added is hovered. That's what it goes for. Do allow when disabled the hover flags, and then we're gonna do I'm GUI set tool tip. And we're just gonna call it ends hook and allows reinjection. So this will make a nice tool tip <coughs> for us. <coughs> so we're going to build this. We're going to try it out. And then we're going to go ahead and make a cheat for Idle Slayer. Um, so first thing we need to do is just real quick, just inject it, see if it works. Okay, no errors. And um, we can now go to MISC and hover over it and it shows our tool tip. And we have our value. And if we hit insert, it will go away and it will re appear. But if we spam insert, yeah, never mind. We can go away and it will reappear. Cool. 
Um, now let's go ahead and hook cheat engine and um, get to doing it. I just actually open Valorant. All right, we just closed Valorant, but let's go ahead and open cheat engine and let's open Idol Slayer. And we're gonna scan for our coins here. So I I know that our coins are gonna be afloat. Um, so 43. All right, and we get 13k addresses. So what we can do is just go ahead and jump and get the 49. Change the value and scan for the next value. And we get one address which we can change. What? Yeah, okay, this is definitely a double then. Never mind. I know it has decimal points, and if it doesn't, if if it's not a float, it's gotta be double. Yep, so found six addresses here. And we try to keep doing this. So we get a good one. Yep, All right, so this is our address. We can delete both of these, and now we know it's a double. Um, we can actually go into our uh, this one, and we can go ahead and change this to input float to input double. And then what we need to do is you'll see that we'll have an error here because this global needs to be a static double. Okay, so. Um, the thing is, with Cheat Engine, if we go ahead and save this address, next time we relaunch the game, this address is going to change. And the reason is, is because it's not a static, it's not a static address. So we need a static pointer address. So to do this, we need to do a uh, generate pointer mapping. So we're going to go ahead and click on this, and we're going to hit generate pointer map. And um, I was doing one for row 96. And so I'm going to make a new one for Idle Slayer. And you can save it as PM1 for point of map one. And let it generate. It should it, it will take longer depending on the game. Like if you have like a hundred gigabyte game, it's gonna take like ten minutes. But we have a relatively small game, so it doesn't take that long. Then we're gonna do is close um <clears throat> oh my goodness, that was horrible. <laughs> and then what we're gonna do is close Idol Slayer and reopen it. And the address will change. As you see, if we hook Idol Slayer again and keep the current address. See that the value is now unknown because it's a different address. So we're just going to delete that address and we're going to do a new scan for 30. We found 30, 378. And now we're going to scan for 33. And we found two. I'm sure this one's it. Yep, this is our address. All we can do is click on it and generate a pointer map for this address too and save it as PM2. Okay. Let it generate. And now what we can do is compare both of them to find the static address. So we're going to do pointer scan for this address. Use save pointer map, PM1, and then select this. We're going to do compare. We're going to select PM2, and then select this. And you see there are different addresses, not by a lot, but they're different addresses. And the reason why they're not by a lot is because they're in the same pointer region. So we're going to set the max level here to 4. And hit OK. And save it as PTR1. Now, if nothing came up, you might need to set it back to 7. But um, 4 just means we're going to get 4 offsets. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4. And the way it goes is, you'll see it says 3. But the way, 0 counts as 1. So it's really 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, so now we're just going to select this one. for uh, just Select the top one and change it. Actually, uh, the top one's value is a float. So we need to change this to double, actually. Yeah, now it should display the correct value. So, delete this pointer scan result. Yep, and now it's 35. It changes to like 40. Changes to 40. So now what we need to do is uh, go ahead and just close our game and reopen Idle Slayer. And if we reconnect to the exe, uh, this one, this address should instantly work. Yep, keep the current. Yep, and now I see we can instantly change it. So this address will stay relative until I think we update the game. But this is the static address. Um, okay, so now let's get into how to actually uh, handle this. So we can't actually just write to this uh, yet. We need, to, we need something that will actually um, go ahead and add all of our offsets together to the address. 
and then um, return it as a uint pointer. Um, so we could just do this manually, but it's better to make a function that can do it. Um, so um, yes, yeah, so we're just gonna make a new header file and call it. Um, okay, so we're gonna call this mem. Okay, and um, we're gonna make it a namespace too. So we're gonna do namespace mem. Okay, and then we need a uint pointer function, uint pointer underscore t, and then uh, find address, we'll call it, and we're going to have it accept a uint pointer underscore t as a pointer, and then we're going to make it, we're going to have it accept a vector table, or a vector dictionary, of unsigned ints, unsigned just means it has to be positive, and so it can't be a negative. So we don't, it doesn't return something that will crash our game. Um, we need to include uh, S, uh, S, uh, C, S, <laughs> CST, dent, and we need to include vector. And this will fix all that. So now what we're going to do is a uint pointer underscore T for, ad, for address have it equal to our pointer. Because that's what our address is going to be. And I obviously ended off with a semicolon. And we need to do a for loop. So for unsigned. Make sure all your ints are unsigned for this. Because we don't want a negative offset. Uh, so set it to zero. And we're going to do while uh, uh, i is. While, while i is less than the size of our offset table. We're going to do plus plus i. So. The difference between I plus plus and plus plus I is very minimal. You can look it up, but we're just gonna do plus plus I because that's what I do. Um, we're gonna do uh, address equals, and then we're gonna do a uint pointer underscore t, and make sure it's a pointer. And we're gonna convert this address to a pointer, to a, UI, a pointer of uint pointer, and we're gonna then take our address and add our offsets and make sure it's put i there so it's going to add um the i of our offset so if it's if in our table for example if it's if i is zero then it's going to be our first offset it's going to add it i is one it's going to do a first offset it's going to add it so that's basically what this is going to do and then we're going to return the address whatever we call this so now that we have our fine address, we can actually just go right away into adding it. So here we need to actually write our memory. <clears throat> and writing our memory is very easy. We're going to do um, whatever our thing is. So we have a double here. So we're going to do a double pointer. And then we need to do our mem namespace and then find. Uh, actually, we need to include it before we can do it. So include mem.h. And uh, we're actually just going to make this an offset. So add a new header file and call it offsets.h or whatever. Um, I'm sure you can actually, uh, like, if you really wanted to, you could, if, if, it, if your game is crashing, then you should probably um, go ahead and uh, not use an offset and just write it because sometimes it won't be loaded in and... You're, whenever you inject your DSL, it's instantly loading, so you might want to inject it at a certain state. That's if your game's crashing, though. We're going to have a UN pointer for our module base. And we know, since so it's an ILL to CPP game, it is our module handle, is our game is game assembly. So get module handle. Um, game assembly dot DLL. And we'll get some errors here because what we have to do is include offsets.h. We're just going to include it in the includes. <coughs> and then everything should be defined. Uh, it's not being defined. Let's just put it in our main.cpp. There we go. All right. And then we need our uint pointer underscore t 
and then we're gonna call this coins coin coin address equals we need a, a double pointer and then we're gonna do our mem namespace did I just hit insert no we're gonna do our mem namespace find address oh nice find oh my god bro find address and then we're gonna do our module base plus and then we need whatever our this isn't g engine so it's just plus this is our gonna be our where our what we look for these offsets for so we're gonna do plus and make sure we add zero x to make it a hexadecimal value and then what we're going to do is have our table of offsets. So the way offsets work is it goes down to up and not up to down. If you put it in the wrong order, it does not work. So I'm just going to put this on my second monitor. And actually, no, I'll just do it right here. So it's 48. So we're going to do OX48, comma, OXB8, OXB8, comma, OX10 and OX18. So OX10, OX18. 18. And then go ahead and end it off. So there's our coin address. So now we can do is go into main.cpp and write to it. And all we have to do is we don't have to use write process memory or anything to do coin address equals um equals <coughs> globals coins. And that's it. And get rid of this reference. There we go. And since our global coins are right here, <coughs> it's a double. We uh we don't have to do it. It's anything. Let's go ahead and build it and see if it works. Oh, we have that re reopen items there. Oh, we don't have to. Oh, shit. We didn't even have to, but... Guess we did. Okay, it opens, and now if we put in our coins, if I click, if I click on it... Yep, put in, like, 400. It's not writing. And... Okay, so why is it not writing? Let's go ahead and check if the address is the same. Okay, so it is the same. Um, let's go ahead and check if we defined it correctly. Yep. Okay, so the reason for it not being the same is probably because we're trying to convert it to a, a this. So we need to do, um, uh, a double. And build it. And we gotta close out so there. If this doesn't work, then I guess we'll just we just won't have it in the offsets.h. Yep. Okay, so um alright, so then I guess we'll just fix it by doing this. So just Copy this. I mean, you just get rid of this. Keep this pointer in here, though. I mean, keep that in there. So, we're going to do that. So, this is going to be whenever we um, change anything in here. It's going to just uh, go ahead and... Which call it? It's just going to go ahead and set it to this. Yep, and there we go, now it works. So we can put in any value here and it instantly changes it now. And this will always work. The The pointer will never switch. Um, we can't do it as an offset because I guess it doesn't get defined instantly. So we have to keep defining it until we eventually get it. 
<coughs> and let's check if our self-destruct works. Yep, it does. I can't reopen it. Let's go ahead and add a tooltip to it. We can just go ahead and just copy uh, this right here. And then go below this. And then change the value to like uh, modifies coin pointer modifies coin value modifies coin value modifies coin value to the 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 amount the amount how do you spell amount? I think it's is it two M's or one M? Let me just check. Yeah, okay, it's one M. Oh, well, we can build this. But um, there's that. Um, now we can't actually build it because this is open. So we're just gonna close this. Let's go ahead and make a watermark because watermarks are pretty cool. Um, so so to make a watermark, all we need to do is just make a different I'm GUI like menu thing. So we just need a new frame. So under this new frame. We're gonna do uh we first have to get the time so to get the time it's pretty easy we're gonna add a auto and you can see it's a keyword here uh you can look up what auto means but start equals std uh chrono uh, and we need to actually add this so just add include pro chrono system clock now so we're gonna do auto end equals std chrono system clock uh, now. And we're gonna do std chrono duration and make it a double elapsed. Yep, I'm gonna call it elapsed seconds equals end minus start. And then we're gonna do time underscore t end underscore time equals SGD chrono system clock to time underscore time underscore t end. <coughs> so now we're accurately getting the time. So let's go ahead and make our size and position of our watermark. So we're gonna do set next window pause. And we're going to have it as 15, 15. And then we're going to do IMGY set next window size. And we're going to have this as 296 by 50, which is a pretty good watermark size. Let's go ahead and begin our watermark tab. So IMGY begin, let's call it watermark. And we're going to put, for this, we don't need this, so, uh, P open, <coughs> just window closing widget, you don't really need that. Null. And we need some flags. So we need I'm GUI window fl flags underscore no collapse. And we need I'm GUI window flags underscore no resize. Then we need, uh, what else do we need? Probably, oh, we need, uh, no, let's get rid of the title bar. I think that's no title bar. Yep. And then finally, we need I'm GUI window flags underscore no move. Yeah, no move. And this, that just makes it so it can't move. Okay, and now let's go ahead and make our, like, text. So we're going to do I'm GUI text. And then we need our name, so we're just gonna do like name of the cheat. I'm just gonna call it Locus Wear. All right, no, I'll call it Sulfate. That what the fuck? That's that's our. And then we're gonna do percent s. And then we're gonna do uh, c time, which will be a reference to end underscore time. And make sure to end it. Like that.
Let's go ahead and build this. Uh, okay, so, yeah, okay, so we're just going to use, uh, just go into here, and then go into preprocessor, and in these preprocessor definitions, we're going to add underscore CRT, underscore secure, underscore no, underscore warnings. We don't need warnings. Apply, and build. Okay, so I think that's actually the whole cheat made. Obviously, you can add more offsets. You just gotta find them and find the static pointers for them. I've been recording for 40 minutes, so it's pretty good. Let's go ahead and see what happens. And there we go. So here's our cheat. And we have our cool watermark in the corner with the time, the date, everything. And the elapsed time, <clears throat> which keeps changing because we added the minus thing. And of course, we can change our coins to something crazy. We can change it to like as much as we can handle. So obviously, if you put a bunch of nines in, <coughs> we now have the max amount of coins that anyone could have. And our tooltip shows. So yeah. Um, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, turn on post notifications. And before we leave, I just need to fix it so that the watermark shows even if we close it. So to fix that, um, we can go ahead and go into our program and we need to take this and put it outside this. So take this if globals.show statement and put it under that. Yep, right here. All right, so let's just go ahead and try this one last time. See if it works. And there's our watermark. And if we hit the key, uh, we get an error. Forget to end previous frame. Um... That should fix it. If this doesn't work, then oh wait, no, 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 because we, because we need to show it in both places here. Uh, let's just try it out. I, I think this is not gonna work, but it might work. Yeah. So um, to fix this, we can just go ahead and take all this. Actually, add this and then take uh, take this whole thing here and put it here. Yeah, and then we have to actually have this. I just take all of this and then put it in here. All right, let's see if this works. All right, so I forget to call render end frame previous frame. All right, yeah, so just take that out, actually, and just leave everything up here. Uh, what we need to do here is we need to render it, because, look, we have to render it at the bottom. So we have to do I'm GUI render. And then if we're showing it, we need to do all this uh, again. So then we can paste all that there and build that. Oh, um, so this is the same. Okay, no. Okay. So then, the, yeah, this. I think we don't need to do all this again.
Just get rid of it. What's the error? Find file five two seven uh, G within frame scope. Alright, so it's because we actually don't even start a new frame here. So just copy this down here because we're trying to end a frame that I think we're not rendering. Yep. Okay, now it works, but our watermark doesn't even appear. So let's fix that. All right, so to fix that not rendering, we're just going to go ahead and take these two things down here and add it up here just because we're actually not uh, returning it. So it's it's rendering, but it's not showing it because there's nothing to actually render it to because we're not defining it. And now, yep, there we go. Oh, there's our watermark. And if we turn this off, our watermark will still stay there. Now, of course, you can make a checkbox to determine whether this works or not that'll be like a simple if statement but i think we're fine right now um there's our watermark it works you could also make it movable but we're just gonna keep it there so there's our video i just see if we can still go ahead and see if i can select the thing can't select our oh wait our our thing isn't rendering correctly oh yeah our, <laughs> never mind our thing isn't rendering correctly all right, so I just realized I'm kind of stupid. I haven't used Kira Hug in a while. And the way this needs, we need to make this work is we instead of rendering both of them at the same time, uh, our shit's getting overloaded. So we need to just make a new frame for one of them. And we take out this, right? And then what we do is we go to this render here, take that out, and we put this, make it render down here. And that's it. So they're both going to render either way. And now if we open up Idle Slayer and inject. Yep. And you see, we can close one or the other. And this will actually work. Put our coins. You see, it actually works. And if we self-destruct, it'll get rid of both of them. So there we go. I hope you guys did enjoy. Make sure to like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and see you guys in the next one.